just as you are into the embrace of community come all who have much to do and are seeking a place of calm of inspiration a place to feel the holy among us in our midst Come all who are anxious and looking for peace of heart. Come all who are worn, who are seeking the deep compassion of God and the embrace of community. Come just as you are to our worship, which will be music-filled this morning, as music has a way of lifting us up and moving us on. So let's stand, and will you join in our uh, call to worship, which is our lighting of the Advent candle. On the first Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of hope, trusting in the renewing power of God. One candle burned, a hedge against the darkness all around us. Then we lit the Advent candle of peace, longing with all creation for grace to enter in here and now. Two candles. And this morning, we light the candle that promises joy. We light it as a sign of our desire to be filled with a kind of gladness that cannot be contained, that must be shared. Even now, as we wait for insight and guidance, we open our hearts and sing and let joy rise up through all the challenges of these days. And let's join our voices. And let's do as God intends and welcome one another as a gift 
Let's share the peace of Christ. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> the reading is uh, from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf, deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning of sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. It shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They will not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. In each heart lies a Bethlehem, an inn where we must ultimately answer whether there is room or not. When we are Bethlehem bound, we can no longer look the other way, conveniently not seeing stars, not hearing angel voices. We can no longer excuse ourselves by busily tending our sheep, our own kingdoms. This Advent, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord will make known to us. In the midst of shopping sprees, let's ponder in our hearts the gift of gifts. Through the tinsel, let's look for the gold of the Christmas star. In the excitement and confusion, in the merry chaos, let's listen for the brush of angels' wings. This Advent, let's go to Bethlehem and find our kneeling place. It is the time so well we love The time of all the year When winter calls with chilling breath For fireside and good cheer a time for man and beast to stand and feel the season's turn. To watch the stars for secret signs and God's true lessons learn. The time when the corn is all into the barn, the old cow's breath of frosty wine, and the frost along the fallow fields does silver shine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And one cold morning, radiant star shines over hill and plain. We know anew to that little babe is born to us again. And man and beast and bird and tree, each one in his own place. We bow our heads and thank our Lord for winter rest and grace. The time when the corn is all into the barn, the old cow's breath of frosty wine, and the frost along the fallow field, the silver shine. And from the first chapter of Luke, verses 34 to 38, Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who has said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here, I, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. The angel of the Lord came down. The angel of the Lord came down. The angel of the Lord came down. And glory shone around. And glory shone around. And glory shone around. And glory shone around. Fear not, said he, for mighty dread, mighty dread, hath seized their troubled mind. Glad tidings of great joy I bring, glad tidings of great joy I bring, glad tidings of the joy I bring, to you and all mankind, to you and all mankind, to you and all mankind, to you and all mankind. To you in Davis town this day, town this day, is born of David's line. The Savior who is Christ the Lord, the Savior who is Christ the Lord, the Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find, there shall find, to you when you display. All mean the wrapped in swaddling bond, all mean the wrapped in swaddling bond, all mean the wrapped in swaddling bond, and in a manger lay, in the manger lay, and in the manger lay, and in a manger lay. Those spoke the seraph and, and forthwith, and forthwith appeared a shining throng 
All the angels praising God who thus. All the angels praising God who thus. All the angels praising God who thus. Address their joyful song. Address the joyful song. Address the joyful song. Address the joyful song. All glory be to God on high. God on high. And peace on earth be peace. Good will henceforth from heaven to men. Good will henceforth from heaven to men. Good will henceforth from heaven to men. Begin and never cease. Begin and never cease. Begin and never cease. Begin and never cease. <laughs> A reading from Psalm 146. Happy are those who help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphans and the widows. By the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. Join me. It's another way of saying the children. And those who are young in heart, their families, come on down. We have lots of people who don't, don't know each other quite yet. Hi, Natalie. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. <laughs> Good morning. And parents, you are welcome to come as well. Come on down. He just started eating? Okay. And <laughs> when he's done... Yes, oh, what lovely dress you have on there, Reagan. So how is everybody doing? It's wonderful to meet everybody. Do you guys know each other? No? Maybe we should do names? What do you think? Should we start with names? Yeah, what's your name? Reagan, Natalie, Eliza, Eliza. and who's this? That's okay. Jackson, and who's that? That's George, and who is that? Mackenzie, and who are the big people? Zach, Jen, Kathy. <laughs> well, it's very, I'm so glad you guys came down here because you know it's Christmas time, but how do you know it's Christmas? What are the signs of Christmas? Yes, Natalie. You could see all the decorations up. Do you have decorations at your house? Outside or inside? Outside, what do you have? Sleighs? Lights? Oh, okay. And how about you? How do you know it's Christmas time? Your sister gave you that little puppy? Oh, for your birthday. I see. I see. Well, I can tell it's Christmas because whenever little girls wear furry dresses, it reminds me of Christmas because it reminds me of my furry dress when I was little too, and the velvet. How about you guys? How do you know that Christmas is coming? He's not talking. Jackson, what do you think? Did Santa get here? Maybe he'll talk later. I think mom and dad have something to say, though. How do you guys know? You have a Christmas tree? So we're going to talk a little bit about traditions. Now, you've got some new ones this year, huh? Because of George. So what's an old tradition of yours? Putting 
up the Christmas tree and having ornaments on the bottom. But that's having ornaments on the bottom of the Christmas tree, but now they're up high. So you've got an old and a new tradition. Yes, yes absolutely. Absolutely. And how about you, Zach? You want to stand up for the, and use the mic? I wonder if we could take that mic down. Can we take it down? Or maybe just stand up. Okay. <laughs> yeah? All the music and the food. So when uh, when we were kids, uh, Granny used to play the same song over and over and over again. <laughs> I think I hear it sometimes when I come into the sanctuary. Oh yeah, <laughs> the song that Granny plays over and over. Yeah, No Reservation at the End by the Statler Brothers was was her favorite. Um, we loved it though. We loved singing it every time it came on. Um, I think from the outside, it was probably maddening to hear the song over and over again, but. You know, it was like that was Christmas for us, you know, just hearing that song. And then all the food my mom used to make, I don't know, like 60 dozen cookies every, yeah, every, every Christmas. So that was, um, it always smelled so good in our house. And then, uh, you know, on Christmas Eve, we'd all go to church and then come back. And then my mom and dad would put out this huge spread of food uh, and light a fire in the fireplace. And it just, it smelled so good. It was so warm. And that was that was Christmas for us. You know, there was monkey bread and dip and and cheese and a huge sandwich. It was like the three bells pounds. and the taste of yeah, Christmas. Right. Yeah. The monkey bread was this like sticky pull apart bread and you touch it and it would be all over your hands and your face. But it was just it was the best part. Thank you. It sounds wonderful. Yep. Side. yep. So what are the other smells? Do you have special special smells? Mm -hmm. For Christmas? I, uh, I just always think of that smell of pine. That's my the, the fresh Christmas trees. And um, both in our house and other people's homes or even some stores you walk into. It smells of pine. Hit that with that nice, fresh, yeah. dirty smell. Yeah. And how about you? Do you have special tastes and smells? And, you know, is there something that you eat for Christmas? No? Just whatever? Cookies, I bet. Yeah. So, you know, Christmas is all about giving gifts and getting presents and giving presents. But sometimes we have presents of the heart, not stuff, but we want to give presents of the heart to people that we love and even to people that we don't even know yet. And I am wondering, what's a present of the heart that you would like to give to your little one this year, Mia? Hmm. Thank you. Just as cool. Well, just how much I love him, I guess. How much you love him. Present of the heart. Think about it. What's a present of the heart that you would like to give to somebody in your family, someone that you know? Who's Natalie? Love. Loveness. Absolutely. What's another gift of the heart that you would like to give? Congregation? Is there a gift of the heart that you would like to give to someone in your family? Or to our world? What's a gift of the heart that you would like to give to this world this year? Smiles? Peace? Yes, Reagan? Hugs? Oh, yes. This world needs more hugs in it. What else? Another gift of the heart. Let's pray together. That's okay. Let's pray. You know what? Let's stand up and pray. Can we stand up? And congregation, can you stand up too? And let's, let's like do this. And let's pray this way. And now let's pray this way. And now let's stand on one foot. Let, one foot. One foot. Because you know what? We can pray any way we want to because God hears us no matter what, because we find God in one another, and God is all over the place, up, down, and in between. So let's put our hands together. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your presence among us, for the grace that fills up our lives, for the smells and tastes and beauty of this season, and for gifts of the heart. For oh God, this world needs gifts of the heart. Help us to find just the right one, to give to just to the right person. And may we also remember the strangers, those whose names that we don't know, 
those who are in need of dignity and embrace and hugs and love and kindness. Dear God, help us to sing from the heart, to sing and know that indeed peace will come on this earth. Peace will come on this earth. For all that is good and right and beautiful, we give you thanks. And together we say, Amen. And now let's play instruments and sing. So you can sit down and the children have a gift to give to you. And Beth, you can come on up here too. Would you like to play a second? <laughs> Would you like to play a tune, Kathy? Hi, me? Is he in the oh, yeah, they're, they're getting it. Oh, okay. <laughs> So yesterday we got together and we made Advent with all the different candles on them. And they're giving them to someone that they love in their family. And yesterday I gave one for those who know Scott Saxby. So they visited on with, Sa with Scott, and I gave him one of the ones for us, and thought it was a file. So there's a picture of him on the face of a friend on his head. So <laughs> this is going to be a joyful noise unto the Lord. Um, the story is about an angel band. And the first angel can't sing, so they play bells. Second angel also can't sing. I don't know what's going up on up in heaven that they can't sing. But the second angel plays tambourine. Third angel plays drums. And then guess what? We're going to play them all together. So just be prepared. Here we go. You got your bells ready? Okay, I'll tell you when.
Okay. You don't read. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean t town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of the Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imaginations of their hearts. He has brought down the power from, from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty. He has come to the aid of this child Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. Let's take a few moments in the quiet and imagine the two of them together. For God, stir in us, open our imaginations and our heart to hear afresh your word in a way that touches us, that moves us closer to be your people. Amen. Gathering, connecting, it's really at the heart of this season for so many of us. And I love hearing about the family ties, the stories that come to life in scripture this time of year. Luke writes that when the angel's message comes to Mary, that she will be the bearer of new life. She's flustered and perplexed, but that she says yes to this impossible possibility. And then immediately, she takes off across the countryside to her relative's place, believing that Elizabeth would understand something of this amazing thing that was happening, since Elizabeth, too, is expecting. I imagine her running there across the countryside as there are few things more powerful than finding yourself in a situation beyond imagination and encountering someone else who knows about it from inside out, something of what it's like to be in that place, someone who can meet you there. Luke tells us, that Elizabeth greeted Mary with a welcome that was not only free from judgment, but full of delight, that she made room for Mary, and that over the next couple of months, their lives, their days, and their nights entwined. Generations apart, they lean into one another, on each other. 
Likely, Mary steadied, is steadied by Elizabeth, who's older and more experienced around births and babies and waiting and preparing. And I can see Elizabeth's own pregnancy and hope sustained and enlivened by Mary's incredible energy about the birth, this treasure that is within her. And surely the two women encourage one another when fear creeps into their vulnerability. And I imagine there are times when they just sit together in the dark, holding each other's hand, holding on to this promise. Each year I hear this story about the two women. I'm so moved by their complete attention, the attention that they give to one another. Attention is such a gift, such a pure expression of generosity. And I find myself wondering if it's the exquisite safe space between the two that frees Mary to pour out her heart, to let loose her faith, to let loose her magnificent song. This is such a marvelous singing time for so many of us. But thinking about it, it was in biblical times too, as the stories of our faith tell. I think about Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, how after months of silence, he sang out, praising God for the, son of the, the birth of his son, John, who would prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. And I think about the priest Simeon. Just days after Mary gives birth, he stands in the temple and raises his arms and sings out a song, My eyes have seen my salvation. And this morning, it's Mary's turn. Mary sings the stunning song that's come to be known to us as the Magnificat. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. With powerful conviction, Mary adds her voice to those who vividly set the ancient world on notice who tell that soon life will be turned upside down, reshaped according to the common good. The images of Mary that we're so accustomed to portray her in a manicured way, in contrast to the way Luke actually describes her, as someone young, pretty young, a teen likely, was among the poorest of the poor, living in a time when, for the most part, certainly in public, women are silent. And most of us have come to know her in quite the formal way as the Virgin Mary. But it's not her physical presence that I've been thinking about this morning. As I imagine the angel summoning Mary, I see her leaving the conventional wisdom of her day and entering into a realm where that's very few of the old rules, if any, make sense. I see her entering unknown territory, virgin territory, where she experiences her own truth, where her dreams take on flesh, where there's no one to limit the, what's growing within her, the fullness of her growth. Mary fearlessly believes that she's a dwelling place through which new life is come. And what's stunning is that she sings as if these things have already happened, in contrast to the way the world actually is in her day. She describes God's promise of a new beginning happening right now, that it's already growing in the womb of faith, in the belly of hope. She takes us into God's vision, which is always at least a step ahead of ours. God's vision never reflects the way things are, but the seeds of the future that are already being sown in the present. When Mary sings her song, nothing on the surface has changed. But she has changed. Which makes me pause as we head into the longest night of the year. 
and I look within myself and I ask if I'm willing to put my trust in the possibilities that are deeply seated within me, within each of us, within our world. Surely each day we dare not deny the calls and the visits for those who come to our door hungry and desperate for the basics, for dignity. And surely each day we must continue to hold ourselves accountable and to rethink our priorities. But Mary's song, it's so moving. It's a call that resounds through the voices of resignation, even reasonableness around us and within us, to nurture the good that's already. It's a call into vulnerability, a call to listen to the heartbeat, to envision out loud and use our strength to give witness, to be a source of strength that empowers others to find their own. The gospel reveals that God is born into this world, in each of us, in our places where we're most in need, where our yearnings are the deepest, where the inarticulate lies waiting, which makes me ponder what it would be like if we just stood still for a few moments, if we all stopped doing for just a little while. While life is noisy and busy and pressed, those times it's easy to lose touch with our truest selves and with one another. But we can reconnect, remember, and when we do, we too get glimpses of the ultimate gift we wait for each year at this time, the divine in our midst, already, Emmanuel. So let's take a few moments right now. Let's be in the quiet together and let's listen to our breathing and bring to mind, be in our hearts. Take a moment now to be with someone who gives you hope or with someone whose hope is faint. And be with someone who's living in fear or someone who stills yours and gives you peace. Just take a moment to look deep within what's growing in your own Advent soul. It's truly a marvelous thing that in the midst of it all, here we are. We're here together. We're here to listen to the angels in our midst, still whispering, fear not, to reconnect to faith and to offer it to one another. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.
And from the writings of Howard Thurman. This is the season of the year when so many little things stand out in the stark outline against the background of our days. When we think about little children all over the world, children in orphanages and refugee camps who have known little or nothing throughout the length of their days, children in our own land and in other lands who are rootless, whose tender lives are cut adrift from all harbors of security, children and families where there is so little love that they are unaware that their lives are touched with the gentleness of God's love, sick children who will not have the chance to look out upon the beauty of the world. Our hearts, our hearts melt in the quietness as we remember the children of the world and we pray, God of our hearts and lives, accept the tenderness which we pour out in our thoughts and grant that it will inform our deeds so that during these days that are upon us, we may be the messengers of your good tidings and sharers of your peace. To this very good season where gifts are shared, and open our hearts and give generously that this church might continue the work, the very good work that it's been doing. We are just for that that you are.
Ready? Yeah. The night. We just did that one. Do you see what I see? In the sky, a little lamb. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? It's a star, a star, dancing in the night. Big as a cow, with a tail as big as a cow. And a little lamb to the shepherd boy. Do you know what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? Into the sky, shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above a tree with a voice as big as the sea. With a voice as big as the sea. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? Your palace more mighty king, Do you know what I know? Do you know what I know? A child, a child, shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Listen to what I say. A child, a child, a child, shivering in the night, he will bring us goodness and love. He will bring us goodness and love. Thank you. Will you stand to join in the Lord's Prayer as is printed in your order of service? Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings, your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Gaudete, gaudete, Christus asnatus, ex Maria Virgine, gaudete, 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 Christus asnatus, ex Maria Virgine, gaudete, tempus ares gratiae, ocur abdabamus, Carmina letite e devote redamus. Gaudete, gaudete, Christus espatus, ex Maria Virgine. Gaudete, 
Thou Deutschen, Thou Deutsche Christus es Natus, Ex Maria Virgin et Gaudite, Tempus Hades Gratiae, Hoc Urapta Bamos, Carminale Tituie Devote Redamos, Gaudite, Gaudite Christus es Natus, Ex Maria Gaudete, 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 Christus es natus, ex Maria Gaudete, gaudete, Christus es natus, ex mori, gaudete, Christus es natus, ex mori, gaudete, gaudete, Christus es natus, ex mori, Gaudete, gaudete, Christus es natus, ex Maria Virgine, gaudete. And so I want to begin our time of looking forward by seeing right here for the moment. And first of all, saying thank you to Kathy and to our choir, as always, you, you put things together and you bring out the season, so thank you for that. And a very warm and wonderful thank you to our gentlemen choir, uh, to Chris and Kirk and Owen and Lucius, and you too, Christine, for, <laughs> for inspiring them on. Um, I Sue Bemis was going to sing, and the last moment she ended up with a sore throat, so I said to Lucius, do you think you could sing one more and here we have, we had this this last song here that, that the guys uh, sang. So thank you very much for, for being a part of us. And this is a time that we do look forward. Are there things that you'd like to lift up and uh, share with the congregation? Kate? Thank you all who have brought in their toys for Toys for Tots. We're, we're in the home run. I am looking for a little help on Saturday from about 2 to whenever the last person comes to pick up, so maybe 3.30. Um, so if you have any availability next Saturday from around 2 uh, to 3 or 3.30, that would be great. Thanks, Kate. And I did want to share with you about the poinsettias. You'll see the, the you, you should have some slips in your order of service. December 13th, is that correct, Jane? Is the last, is the last time before the, uh, altar guild ladies order the poinsettias and, and they decorate our sanctuary. Yes, Connie? What's that? One more shameless plug that you do have one more week to buy a raffle ticket for that beautiful quilt that's up here on the first pew. We will be drawing the tickets, the winning ticket on next Sunday after service. So if you're interested, see me or Debbie Potts. The tickets are $2 a piece or, or five for $5. Thank you. Three for $5, sir. Debbie's going. <laughs> And next Sunday, also in worship, uh, we have a renewal of 50 years of marriage with uh, Kathy and Mike, and her family will be joining us and some friends. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so the downstairs in, in, uh, in I was going to say Fellowship Hall in the chapel, uh, they will we'll be celebrating with them as well for, for coffee hour. And Christmas Eve, this uh, will be 7 o'clock. Um, on Christmas Eve. Yes, Debbie. She's inching right over there in the middle. <laughs> Trap. In your um, bulletins, there is a, a pamphlet and a envelope for the Christmas fund. And if you read that pamphlet, it'll tell you what it's about. But it's a collection that goes 
to retired um, UCC pastors and their families to supplement their um, maybe their health care or if they're having a hard time struggling with their pensions. It's a good fund. So thank you for donating. Thank you. And actually, that fund will be distributed um, uh, with the Methodist Church as well, as we are a federated church, so it goes to all of our denominations. Other announcements, March? Did you want to? What's that? I think this one's on. Oh. I'm not sure who's. Okay. Um, I have a card we're, we're passing around. If anyone afterwards would like to sign this, um, uh, we are sad to say that our co organist, Ruth Harling, has decided to resign, that it's just uh, not working the, the way we all hoped. So we hope to still see her now and then, but she will not be a co leader. Um, and so I have a card if you haven't yet signed one of them. There are a couple going around. Did you want to? See, I don't know. Is there a picture afterwards? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so after worship, um, let's all just gather, and uh, we'll have a group picture for our directory. You can even if you don't belong, you can come up and be in the picture. <laughs> Other announcements. Listen to the words from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You must also be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Friends, may the light of joy fall wide around our feet. As we walk into this week, may hope and peace and joy be ours that we might share it and indeed empower others to find their own. And may this day be one of thanking God. Let's stand and join our voices in song.
Thank you.